on my spiritual journey, I have, um, you know, woke up to certain things, mm -hmm. you know, um, spiritually and emotionally yes. more than anything because, you know, a lot of uh, my spiritual experience calls me to do things. Yes. You know, it calls me to, you know, show up in a, in a way, you know, that um, directly, you know, uh, confronts fear. And, okay. and, and, you know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing when you're ready. Peace and riches, blessings. I am Michael B. Beck with the host of Take Back Your Mind. Peace and blessings, everyone, and welcome to Take Back Your Mind, the podcast that is about curating our thoughts, bringing them into captivity, so they don't just run wild. In other words, you know, your thoughts, they produce proteins. Your thoughts produce the matter. Your thoughts produce perception that, be terms, that becomes ultimately experience. We want to take back our mind. We don't just want it just to run crazy or be under siege of an external influence that you don't like. The news, lowest common denominator of the human experience, leading to worst case scenarios, worry, doubt, fear, anxiousness, anxiety, and sometimes even bringing you into polarization where you end up creating a sense of separation between you and other people just because you don't agree on things. No, don't fall prey to that. Take back your mind. You begin to see that you're living in a field of infinite potential and infinite possibilities, and you have the inner authority to choose a possibility for you. Not the world, not your government, not the news, those who are reporting it, so to speak. You, take back your mind. I'm your host, Michael Beck, with the founder of the Agape International Spiritual Center. We always begin our program with a life question of the week. Today this question is from Julian. Julian is from Chile. Julian asks, what is your take on discipline and persistence when it comes to changing, to doing something you know will be good for you, but then you fall prey to your old bad habits? In my case, I know I need to modify some behaviors to achieve my full potential and to have, more have a more fulfilling life. However, after a while, I relapse into the old patterns that only makes me feel bad and guilty for not applying what I already know in my mind. How can I embrace new behaviors in my life and soul and make them part of my existence? It's a good question. First of all, the word discipline comes from um, disciple. Disciple means, uh, a disciple is someone who loves something. So that if a person is a disciple of music, they may become, a, have achieved the discipline to practice the piano until they're able to produce music or catch music and amplify it through their fingers, or whether it's the saxophone or the drums or whatever. So to, it means to fall in love with something. So as you develop a level of discipline, you're falling in love with something that then becomes what I, a term that I coined a uh, number of years ago, maybe almost 20 years ago, the word blissipline came out of me I, uh, at a day when I was speaking. Your discipline becomes a blissipline because you're following what you really love. Now here's the deal. Uh, you talked about you feel bad and guilty when you fall off, when you're not applying what you know. No, you don't beat yourself up. You don't get mad at yourself. What do you do? You begin again. You keep beginning again until you get to 63 days. Now, some people talk about changing a habit in 21 days, changing a habit in 40 days, and though uh, 21 and 40 are on your way to 63. If you can do something for 63 days in a row, it becomes almost permanently etched in your subconscious and in your um, neurovegetative system 
it becomes, you begin to requalify your nervous system. Now, how else do you do it? Fall in love with what you have to do. That's, that's a part of being a genius. So let's say you're, 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 you're developing a discipline, you're saying here in terms of a certain habits you wanna change. If, if, and, you, and you've told yourself you have to do A, B, and C to accomplish that. Instead of looking at it like, oh, I gotta do this. You begin to change your mind to fall in love with what you have to do. And then, instead of going against the resistance that you are creating by trying to make something happen, the chemistry in your body changes and you're actually falling in love with what you have to do. So you see, I'm giving you certain layers here. One, you, you, the motivation is love self-love and you're falling in love with the way of life that you're going to birth even before it happens. You're starting to see it even before it happens. When you fall, don't beat yourself up. Begin again, begin again, begin again, over and over and over again until the discipline becomes a discipline, and then you just check it off in your journal, day one, day two. Day three, oh, I fail. You begin again. You get to 63 days, you'll have a habit. You'll have a habit. And I think this is gonna, this, this, I'm gonna be talking to Omarion shortly. And um, he's a disciplined, discipline kind of guy that you'll see when we, when we have our interview. And one of the things that I've taught over the years is that your, your attitude ultimately becomes your character and your character becomes your destiny. You see, people used to think immaturely that your destiny is determined by your karma. No, karma can only determine starting points. It can't determine destiny. Karma is the energy that you've accrued. You put out a certain kind of energy, you have a certain kind of energy coming back. So, so your karma can determine a starting point in your life, but it can't determine your destiny. What determines your destiny? Your attitude. Attitude becomes your character. Character determines destiny. So go back, fall in love with what you have to do. You fall, don't beat yourself up, begin again until your discipline becomes a discipline. You'll thank yourself for it. We'll be right back with Omarian. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Peace and blessings, everyone, and welcome back to Take Back Your Mind, the podcast that's basically about you taking back your mind, where it's been hijacked by fear or worry or doubt or botherability. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> we, I talk to individuals who have learned and demonstrated in their life how to take back their mind. So that the mind becomes an avenue of greater awareness, spontaneous goodness, inspiration, all to the glory of the living one, the divine presence that's everywhere. Mm. As I indicated earlier, Omarion is with me this morning. Multi-platinum, Grammy-nominated recording artist, producer, and actor among the ranks of R&B's elite. He's aptly crowned by the fans as the king of unbothered and is a pop culture phenomenon who has remained in the upper echelon of R&B in the pop world throughout his 20-year career. His unmistakable sound has driven the success of numerous multi-platinum chart-topping records, recognized multiple with multiple BET awards and nominations for American Music Award, Teen Choice, iHeart Radio Awards, Grammy Award nomination for Best Contemporary R&B Album, the pop icon, he continues to electrify audiences worldwide with his charismatic energy and signature dance moves. Before this is over, he's gonna tell us when his next performance live in person will be sometime in December. His current album, Full Circle, Sonic Book One, debuted at the number one spot on iTunes. Number two is coming out shortly. He's the author of this critically acclaimed book right here, Unbothered, The Power of Choosing Joy. I had the honor and privilege of doing the forward to the yes. book. So tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, you're growing up a little bit. You know, you, you now have a, um, 
you're totally dedicated to growing spiritually now. Yes. But was it always like that? As a kid, did you grow up religious or spiritual or anything? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. Always, it's, it's always a pleasure to uh, speak with you. Um, also, again, thank you for my forward, oh, absolutely. you know, um, and being able to speak with uh, people like myself that's, you know, been in this industry since a child. That's when I started. Right. You know, um, I had a young mother, you know, uh, she was 15 when she had me. Wow. Uh, okay. Shout out to the Dorsey Dons. You know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> yeah, she went to Dorsey. Really? What year did she graduate? You know what? Don't give me the line. Oh, you don't know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't remember. <laughs> I, I, I went to, to LA some High. High. Oh, you did? I had okay. friends at Dorsey. You uh, know. Okay, yeah, yeah, my auntie went to LA High. Okay. Right. Yeah, so it, it's always cool to, to, to speak to, you know, uh, honorary Californians, you okay, know? You like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I had a young mother, and, you know, the cool thing about having a young mother is that she always allowed me to explore anything and everything right, right. you know um i'm the firstborn of uh four okay and um i would definitely say there was always a cultural and mm. uh, spirituality around me um my nana uh who transitioned last year mm. uh who is now an ancestor yes you know what i'm saying and look look out for me i would say that she was you know uh the glue of the family and really introduced me to i'm not sure if you remember back in the day at dorsey they used to have this uh festival called uh, the African marketplace. Of course. Okay. Yeah, my boy put that on, James Burks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we we used to work together. Yeah, so, you know, I was the kid running around the African marketplace. I was speaking. Oh, wow. They had me speaking on the stage. Oh, wow, that's amazing. I loved that place. Yeah, so, you know, that was my culture. That's how right. I came up. You wow. know, my, my Nana always had me in the right places. You know, she, fun fact, she used to braid Stevie Wonder's hair. What's your auntie's name? Uh, my Nana, her name is Phyllis Burrell, but she goes by Omalafe. Uh huh. Because there was a woman by the name of uh, gosh, she used to do my hair and Stevie's too. Oh wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My nana did hair. You know, I come from a hair family. Uh -huh. She used to have a shop right on Crenshaw. Uh -huh. Um, and yeah, you know, what I mean, this community has pretty much raised me up spiritually and culturally. So you probably hang out at Lambert Park a little bit too. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's that's my <laughs> snuffing grounds. I went to Audubon too. Oh man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and John Burroughs. So I'm a I real. I went to John Burroughs. Okay. <laughs> my girlfriend went to Audubon. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. real, you know, Calif Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. So we went from that to that boy band. Yes. That became very, very popular. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So you, you, I guess your charismatic energy just just evolved into that type of dynamic. Yeah. Um, you know, I, w I went to Hamilton High, which is, you know, performing arts school. Right, and then right. before that, I went to this academy called LAFA. Um mm -hmm. And I performed for Debbie Allen, and I'm like one of those inner city kids that's right. always been a performer, and that did lead, you know, to the opportunity of being with the group. And uh -huh. you know, um, I always consider my um, experience unique because there's only a few people in the music business that has a similar journey as mine, and that's like Michael Jackson, which started in a group. Right. You know, right. Beyonce, which started in a group. Right. You know, right. Justin right. Timberlake, which started in a group. And I think that it's always interesting when you learn to share the stage with people, you know, uh, opposed to, you know, maybe a solo artist is, you know, more focused mm -hmm. on solo driven, you know what I mean? This is an important point. So you're saying that being a part of a, a group gave you much more uh, like a team vibe, how yep. to work with people. Exactly. And not just go, me, it's me, about me, me. me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. was. I, that's why I say a unique experience because yeah. you know um, those artists currently that are in the. I mean, it, it's it's not a lot. You yeah. know, it's not a lot of people that come from that shared space that setting, theater setting. Right, you know? right, and that's, right. That's what I was used to do. So right, it was very natural for me to transition into my my group. Right in the in the recovery. Uh, part of life, they'll say, and this is not just in recovery, but in spiritual teachings, yeah. they, there's I in the illness, but there's we in wellness, mm. you know? Mm. So if one of you real focus on I, 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 right. then that produces illness because there's a sense of separation, a sense of ego. Yes. But if you deal with the we, it, yes. there's a sense of wellness, which is why community is very important, Yes, you know? So your group was actually a little community. Exactly. Of support and learning how to work with each other yep. and, and got each other's back if somebody yep. made a mistake or something, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, just partners on the journey. Yeah. You know, because um, for me, you know, I was very young. I, I remember m maybe my 10th grade year out of, after that, you know, I was homeschooling on tour. Oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. you know, um, I took off 
pretty young, pretty early, and having the sense of community, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the sense of we mm -hmm. is really what, you know, um, was the deciding factor on, you know, pursuing music because it was it was like I wasn't doing it alone. I was doing it with my with my boys. With your boys yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, we took on the world like that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I know about that. When I was, when I first woke up spiritually, mm -hmm. uh, I was alone mm -hmm. because people thought I'd lost my mind. Mm. You know, because I'd had this spiritual awakening and I couldn't explain everything that was happening because it was wordless. Didn't yeah. have a lot of words to it. Yeah. So I lost pretty much all my friends. Wow. And I, I went around, I remember the day I went around to all my boys and said, hey, there really is something beyond this world. Mm -hmm. There really is something. And, you know, because we were all very revolutionary. Okay. You know, it's like we're revolutionaries. We're going to change the world. Yeah. Religion is not nothing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they all kind of wrote me off, mm. except for one, one friend of mine. I went to his house, saw his, his wife, his soon-to-be wife, he went with me at the time, and I said, mm -hmm. listen, you know, I've had this experience. There's a presence that's very real, mm. you know, and there's dimensions beyond this dimension. I've seen it. And he came walking down the hallway, and he said, I believe you. Mm. And so I had a partner. His name was Reggie. He changed his name to Nirvana mm. uh, to walk this journey together. So I understand yeah, and he became my boy. You yeah. know, we 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 explored all kinds of meditations. Yeah. Went to all the gurus. Wow, trying to figure out what had happened to wow. me. You know what I mean? So I understand yeah. that sense of partnership that's so 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 essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was very profound and yeah. deep. And in <clears throat> hindsight, you know, uh, really realizing how you know um, important you know being able to meet those people that sometimes have to split down the middle and go one way or the other yeah. has been so prolific for my, you know, not just experience, but my spiritual journey as well. Right. Because, you know, once you start to tap in, as I say, you know, things change. Oh, things yeah. change within you, the way that you see, the way that you operate, the people that you are connected to for the reasons, or for what reasons, um, it's all so very apparent. And um, thank you for sharing that with me because, you know, um, I think that, you know, on my spiritual journey, or I feel that, you know, on my spiritual journey, I have, um, you know, woke up to certain things, mm -hmm. you know, um, spiritually and emotionally yes. more than anything because, you know, a lot of uh, my spiritual experience calls me to do things. Yes. You know, it calls me to, you know, show up in a, in a way, you know, that um, directly, you know, uh, confronts fear and, okay. and, and you know, it, it's, it's an amazing thing when you're ready. Yeah, let's talk about that for a moment. I wanna, I wanna get into your book for a moment, but you, yeah. you said something very important that allows you to directly confront fear. Mm -hmm. You know, what is, well, break that down for me. I wanna, yeah, so I, I wanna you know, see how you see it. Yeah, so uh, fear is, is, is a lot of things, you know. Uh, one thing is, you know, it can definitely play tricks on your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, it can, it can essentially, you know, make you stuck mm -hmm. you know uh it, it's kind of designed and built that way mm -hmm. but the really special thing about you know going beyond that is it's something that is hard to explain it's something you have to find out yeah you have to you know um be so strong and, and curious curious you know, okay. curious mm -hmm. um about the next steps you know, that you want to find out. Mm -hmm. And I, I've always had a great relationship with fear, mm -hmm. especially with going on the stage, mm. you know, um, because getting <laughs> to the stage every time, you know, there's different things going on. People don't understand that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, you get to the stage every night, every you know, different cities, and different things are happening right, right. in the, that day. People don't know what's behind the scene. Yes. Right. You know, it. it I mean... I can give you so many examples when, I mean, the power wasn't even on. And right. they're like, are you ready? Oh, I'm like, I can't hear myself. Right, right, you right. You know, uh, <laughs> things go on with the sound, you yeah, know, yeah, um, yeah. and you just have to keep going. So I've always had a great relationship with confronting fear and just be like, this is my decision. This is my walk. This is my passion. Let me arrive. So No, I, I like that. I like that. I always uh, tell people that. You don't try to. Some people have what you call a. I was talking this morning with mm -hmm. Anita, uh, Anahita June, and we were talking about the fact that some people have a fear phobia. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of fear. <laughs> right. And right. so then they try to do everything to get rid of the fear. Right. When in fact, as what you're talking about, you confront it, you embrace it, yep. and you become curious about your next steps. Yep. And then, the, and then that fear, which is an energy, 
yeah. becomes excitement. Yes. How, how, how is this going? I know it's going to turn out okay, right, but, right. but how is it going to turn out okay? Right. You know, right. and then it becomes enthusiasm. Let's go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but the same thing, you know, we, when we're doing agape on Sundays, people don't see all this stuff behind the scenes. Right. They don't see the practitioners getting ready, the band rehearsing, right. the singers rehearsing. Do we have power? Right. You know, what's going on? You right. know what I mean? All they see is us coming out, you know, I'm, I'm doing my deal, everybody's doing their deal. They have no idea. This is a production every week. Yeah. Three yeah. services every yeah. week, you know, and, and, and trying to bring it fresh. Yeah. You know, so I understand exactly what you're saying, but I like what you said in terms of, uh, you know, you have a good relationship with fear. Yeah. It's not, you're not afraid of it. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, it, it, uh, it supports you and protects you. Uh-huh. It protects you, you know. Um, but the thing about understanding that is, is you know, um, who are you? You right. know, why, why, why do you feel like it's protecting you? Why do you feel like you need to go beyond? Asking those very important questions to yourself really helps you not stay stuck yeah. and, and move forward to your no. Because right. that's, that's when everything is powerful, when you know. Right. Yeah, you go from a theory, mm-hmm. hypothesis, to right. actually knowing something in you. Yeah. See, those are, those are good questions because um, the universe through law answers whatever question you ask. Right. But many people ask questions like, what's wrong? Who's to right. blame? Right. Why me? Right. But you're asking a higher order of question. So then the universe brings you a higher answer mm. and compels you mm. into areas that you didn't even know you could even go there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. you brought up Michael Jackson earlier. I used to, he used to fly me up to his house oh, wow. in Vegas uh, to counsel him. Mm. And uh, we'd be sitting there talking. In the middle of the session, he would jump up and start dancing. Wow. <laughs> and then he'd sit back down. And he'd say, you know, a new dance move moved through that my mind. At that time, mm. I needed to lock it in mm. before I forgot it. The goal. You know, so he was just <laughs> in the moment. Wow. You know, he wasn't afraid to just be himself. Yeah. You know, sitting with me. Yeah. You know, like we're supposed to be in a counseling session and we're supposed to be whatever. Right. <laughs> he just just jump up, start dancing. He said, I need to lock that in. You know, wow. so you, you happened to bring up his name, so it just reminded me no. that he was kind of fearless, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yo, I'm so glad that you tell me that because that's what um, a lot of people don't understand about the gift of dance, Yeah, that it comes to you. Yeah. It, and you have to wait and you have to be patient, you know? And that's the thing about, you know, um, you know, people like Michael Jackson that understand that and can be show a person like me that loves to dance so much because, you know. Yeah, people, you were dancing fool. People used to, <laughs> yo, Cat Williams, so many people, they'd be like, yo, why is Omarion dancing so much? But they didn't understand that the spirit, yeah. the spirit was calling me yeah. to move. Right. As soon as music come on, right. my body has its own operating and connection system right. to music. Right, right. And that is spiritual. <clears throat> right. That is very spiritual. Oh, it's very spiritual. Yeah, there's an inner spiritual choreographer yes. that's taken over. And it, it goes back to through our whole ancestral line. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, you go to uh, the continent of Africa and you go to any of those countries, yeah. there is definitely a movement Facts. that just takes over. And, <laughs> and not just in Africa, it's all over the yeah, world, yeah, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, you go to the Celtic community, you yeah. know, uh, there's, a, there's a movement that just does something to our body. And sometimes people try to be a little too cool. Yeah. You know, they don't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, no, yeah. Get, off, get your back up off <laughs> the wall. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know? Yes, exactly. I, I understand that. But, but, but growing up in this boy band and then ultimately you kind of been like named like the king of the the king of unbotherability. Come on, you know, come on. People know you that way, <laughs> yeah. you know. And I used to always say that uh, in my teachings too. It's like you get to a point where you're unbothered. Yeah. You know, how did that develop in you? Well, fortunately, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because uh, you know the experience, the experiences that we have, yeah. you know, in this this life, it really um, prepares us and shows us what we don't want. Right, absolutely. And, you know, this, you know, coming to, you know, being mm-hmm. dubbed the king of unbothered, which is it's so it's so funny to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's really That's cool. That's what they call you. But hey, but you know what? I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it is, it's, it's great to be represented, you know, um, and called something that has to do with, you know, dealing with 
the things that make you uncomfortable. Yeah. The things, you know, the things that people say, the things that people do, social media, right. you know, um, things maybe not going your way. Right. And just being firm and, you know, believing that not only things will be all right, but you know, things are working in your favor. Yes. And, you know, that's... So that's a feeling you have, right? Oh, yeah. That's yeah. a. Yeah. That's what comes with being unbothered because, yeah. you know, um, you know how they say opposites attract. Right. You know, when, when you want to be cool, there's something, there's some type of energy. It could come in the form of a person. Yeah. You know, it could come in so many different ways. Right, right. But you have to decide, you know... It, Am I being in, am I being pulled into a direction that I don't want to be in? Right. You know, you have to really be firm in um, your walk. Right. So, being unbothered has definitely showed me, you know, that um, it's a choice. Joy is a choice. You know, not not being bothered by the outside world is something that I, I feel like artists they used to tell artists to do that. You mm -hmm. know, but it, it's becoming like something that everyone should do. Oh yeah. Everyone should be unmoved by negativity. Period. Yeah. Right, right. And but it's kind of a training too. Yeah. It's like the average person is getting their happiness, but it's not it's not real happiness, it's counterfeit happiness mm. because their happiness is coming from something being the way they want it to be. Mm. But you're describing that real strength is being able to maintain that joy or happiness or unbotherability mm -hmm. even when things aren't going your way. That's facts. Because it's easy to do it if everything right. just, you know, just flowing. That's facts, yes. You know, but yeah. it takes like a strength yeah. to say I'm unbothered. You yeah. know, I remember I was, I was uh, talking with somebody and uh, they, were, they were worried about something. And I, and I just happened to say, you know, yeah, I think you're worrying a little bit too much. And they said, you don't worry enough. <laughs> you know, they, they, they screamed at me, said, you don't worry enough. Uh -huh. And then they caught themselves like, oh, never, I'm sorry. I said that. You know? <laughs> wow. <laughs> because, yeah. you know, uh, but, but the average person sometimes normalizes mm -hmm. reactivity. That's true. Uh, worry. And it's just like normal. Like, you know, we just come out of this lockdown. Mm hmm and there's a lot of things that happened from that. People felt isolated. Yeah. Not everybody. Yeah. But a lot of people felt isolated. They felt alone. They were worried. They were watching the news all the time. Yeah. And they were worried. Uh, worst case scenarios. Right. And, and then, depending on who they hung out with, that became like their normal way of thinking. Right. And I like to say we don't want to normalize worry. Uh. -uh. Or, f or 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 having fear take yeah. over. Yeah. We want to normalize joy. Exactly. And and sometimes you have to be strong because mm. people think you're weird yeah. <laughs> if you're happy right. even when things aren't going well. That's say, true. What's wrong with this cat? Yeah. You know, but it's actually what's right with this guy. Right. You know. So so here we have this book. Yes. Unbothered. Yes. But the the full is unbothered and the power of choosing joy. Yes. And you just said that happiness, joy, you said is actually um, a choice. Yes. You know, so give me your feeling on that. And any, and what, what would you say your main tenets in this book are? I mean, I read it, so I know. What. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I would definitely say, you know, that I am sharing my process, my uh, spiritual journey. Uh, I never forget, uh, I had my second child, my daughter, Ame. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, me and the mother of my child, we decided that we needed to go in different uh, directions. Right. And the house that I um, got at that time, mm -hmm. you know, it was for us. It was right. for all of our memories. And, you know, she ended up moving out. And I remember, you know, just being alone in that house. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember not hearing my kids, mm -hmm. you know, uh, voices. Right. And just that energy. But that time was so prolific for me to be alone. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I mm -hmm. was alone, I was able to really quiet all the noise and really, you know, um set some focus and intentions on the importance of mm -hmm. where I wanted to be in life. You know, um we all have questions about where we are mm -hmm. and where we're going. Mm -hmm. And I'm very much so like that type of person and you know, like we were speaking earlier about things not going our way. Mm -hmm. You know, when things don't go your way, Sometimes you need to be alone. Sometimes you need to silence those voices. Right. And from that experience alone, which at the time was not, um, it wasn't positive. Right. You know, um, a beautiful gift, you know, of my own voice and me spending time with myself and meditating, 
this book came about, mm -hmm. you know, and I started to recalibrate and focus on my inner self and the things that I needed to shift in order to not only be a great father, but continue my career in which that I very love so much. Mm -hmm. um, this book has uh, yantras, mantras, affirmations, and they also have journal prompts that, you know, I have you ask yourself certain questions, questions mm -hmm. that I ask myself on my journey when things weren't going the right way. You know, because family is a, well, is well, a big, the way you wanted them to. Yes. Eventually they were the right way. Yes, yeah. but at that time, yeah, was, yeah. you know, and, and you know, this this is so important. This is this is the mechanism of life that really tunes you in to having, you know, everlasting joy for yourself, even right. through the rough times. Right, right. So, um, you know, I get into that. I have you ask some questions. Um, it's also some breath work in there. Mm -hmm. um, it is all the things that, you know, all the tools that help me really uh, mature, not only uh, as a spiritual person, but a person that can maintain their own personal joy. Right. And that is profound. That's what we all want to do. You know, we all want to be, you know, supportive of one another. Um, you know, just like you, like I, I always say how important you are to our our culture and community. Thank you so much. Mm. And Thank not you. enough young people really have come to the space, you know. Um, we, we, we know they're going to come, but a lot of young people haven't came to the space and realization how important um, and prolific men like you that are, you know, um, serving the all and yourself, you yeah. know. Um, so thank you, thank you. Th thank thank you. you. I mean, I, at a certain point in my life, I didn't have any choice. Yeah. You know, I had to answer the call, yeah. give up resistance, and say yes, move through the fears, yeah. and say yes. But um, you said something very important, you know, when you were by yourself and you were alone. Come on. You turned what looked like a negative, mm -hmm. and it became something very powerful. You know, when, when the lockdown occurred, I asked people to say to themselves, who do I want to become when this is over? Mm -hmm. Don't fight it. People are locked down. I mean, I didn't do the lockdown, but a yeah. lot of people did it. You know, yeah. they, they, they stayed in the house and they did that. I, I said, who do you want to be when this is over so that the, the energy became about unfolding and evolving? Mm -hmm. So you seem to do the same thing when the former wife and the kids were out of the house instead of, I know you had probably moments of loneliness. Of course, all know, of that. But, but at some point, yeah. as you say, the other voice is silenced, yeah. and then your voice emerged. Mm -hmm. so, what, so what became, what was a, a bad situation or a terrible situation or an unplanned situation right. became opportunity, mm. you know? So you turned it into something good. Yeah. And so I think that's a powerful message for people listening because they could be lamenting a loss, mm -hmm someone left them, yep. they left somebody, whatever the case may be, and at some point your attention focused somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And then this emerged. Oh my Lord. So this is like, this is like the pearl in the, in the oyster. This right. is, the oyster you know, gets irritated and right. creates a pearl. Mm. So you had a, a, a moment of irritation and then you created this very beautiful book. Wow. You know. Wow, and, and it's amazing when you are able to take a situation that is looking, you know, not so good and turn it into a beautiful thing. That's that's a real powerful thing. That's actually, you know, how I believe we can cure, you know, a lot of the ailments on the planet. Mm. You know, if we just take, you know, a, a beat to spend a little time with ourselves and listen mm -hmm. to our inner voices and not allow, you know, electronics, anything, you know, go out of nature, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Spend some time with yourself, be silent. Right. And, um, you know, everything will come to you. Right. Your own will come to you. You know, you, <laughs> yep. you, you, you hold that space. Yeah. You know, so obviously we're growing and unfolding. So what would you say your major changes are from right before this book was written all the way up to the present moment? Where, where have, what have you seen emerging from you now? What's different in you now? I would say my ability to speak my truth and also just owning accountability, mm -hmm. you know, um, that looks different for everyone, mm -hmm. you know, um, but just, you know, coming more into myself, being confident in, you know, my journey that's cut out, you know, because a lot of the time in my industry, everybody likes to compare yeah. people's career and this person is like this person. 
And uh, it's made me more confident, you know, about me creating my own space, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, being able to support people on their journey mm. with through my journey, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And, and being proud about that, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I would say that. And then also, you know, my ability to just show up in my business more, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I started so young. You know, a lot of the time the business wasn't something that I completely understand, right, which right. wasn't to my advantage. It right. was to my disadvantage. Right. You know, so as. So it's a business. It's a, it is. It's a music business. Period. You know, and so some people have gotten into the music or the acting. Yeah. But they forgot the back end, which is the, the foundational piece for your prosperity. Period. And for your ability to help other people. Yep. And yeah. sustainability. And, yeah, absolutely. You know, because we don't want to be doing this and then. You know, if, if something happens, then we still got to, you know, do what we're doing. We want to be able to, you know, create a life beyond this. And, and, you know, at this point, even though I'm young, you mm -hmm. know, this is this is legacy work. Yeah. This is legacy work. Yeah, that, is, that's smart. Yeah. And, and I think that um, many people forget that. It's good to be in the moment. Yeah. But it's also good to know that what you're doing right now is cascading into legacy. You Period. Know, is it going to be... Are you going to be struggling? Right. Are you going to be fearful? Right. You know, like, like um, you, you cannot be the light of the world if you can't pay your light bill. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very, you can't pay your light bill so you can't be a light. <laughs> it's very difficult. That's because, true. Because, you know, because all of your energy mm. is going to be able to pay the light bill. Then you don't have energy to assist, to inspire, to help. That's true. You know, because we're all here to contribute. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not here just to get stuff. Yeah. We're here to contribute to the world. Yeah. Which means what you're talking about to a degree is, you know, I call it stabilizing our structures. Mm -hmm. So we have health, body, temple. Yep. We have financial structures. Yep. We have structures of how we deal with people, our relationships. Yep. We have structures of how we deal with community. These are all structures that we live in. And the end game, like in the Western world, the end game mm. is just to get the structures together. Right. But the end game is really once you get your structures together, how do you contribute? Yep. You know, it's not it's not good just to, you know, I have a friend, Ken Honda, and he has a book called Happy Money. Mm -hmm. You know, and he talks about the fact that many people would get their structures together and then just sit on everything. Oh, wow. Until they die. And they then, had no fun. <laughs> they had no fun. <laughs> they didn't help anybody. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Right. And it just, their, their family ends up fighting over what they had. Because wow. they didn't, money was unhappy. It didn't circulate. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the idea of, of it's, we call it unstable structure, meaning that it's always changing. Yeah. So I think legacy is a really good word. Yeah. And, 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 and people of color yeah. really need to learn that word. Period. Because we've been on the end of survival for so long. That's true. That we forget that with certain tweaks, yeah. saving, yeah, you know, don't spend all your money. Don't yep. don't give all the brand names all your money. Come on, <laughs> you know what I'm come saying? on, y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. Keep some for yourself. Yep. You know, uh, get a life insurance policy. Period. Uh, come on. Let it. Let it. Let it. Uh, understand that if you have a life insurance policy, that's like having a bank. Get you, get a trust. Get a trust life mm -hmm. insurance because you can you can. Um, Borrow from yourself yep. and, and pay yourself back with no interest. Come on now, y'all. <laughs> I mean, we're not trying to give a whole financial literacy right, class right, right, right here, but he said the word legacy. Yeah. And that, that speaks to that. And you also yep. talked about the back end of the business of yeah. music, the business of acting. Yep. But you see a lot of people who've done a lot of terrific work and at the end of their life. They're 50, 60, 70 years old. Oh, my goodness. They didn't save a dime. Oh, my goodness. You know? You know, what you were speaking about is so <laughs> important for our community and the cultural of um, a spirituality, yeah, you know what I mean? Because right. spirituality is abundance. Yes. And building up your structures, as you say, and having that in line, it really allows you to create just such a memorable life. Right. It, it does take time to build those structures, oh, but yeah. I, w I would advise you to definitely make sure your, your, your things are in order. Yeah, well, you know, it's habit. Yeah. At, you know, Lao Tzu, he talked about the fact that, you know, you know, your thought, it becomes your speech. Your speech becomes your action. Your action becomes your habit. Mm. Your habit becomes your character. Your character becomes your destiny. So if, in fact, you develop certain good habits, mm. then your character changes and your destiny changes. Oh. You can't, like, blame stuff on people right. forever. Period. You know, everybody's gone through hard times. People have talked about us. They've gossiped. They've stolen. But you can't live there. No. <laughs> you know, and, and, and I think... Being unbothered 
is a part of not living yeah. in this story. You know, matter of fact, what came through when I was in meditation this morning, and uh, I have to choose a topic mm. when I speak. I don't, I don't, I very I generally choose a topic Thursday, Friday. Mm -hmm. It chooses me. Yeah, you know, I people always that. try to get it early, but I say, well, you know, it hadn't come yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting in meditation, and it came early. This I was up at four, mm. so I was meditating around four uh, twenty-six, mm. and it said. Uh, the greatest story ever, to ever told. I said, what? So I, I wrote it down. Mm. And they, they said, the greatest story ever told is a story you tell yourself oh. about yourself. Mm. I said, okay, Ooh. come on now, spirit. Come on now. <laughs> Give it to me. You know? Wow, that's, that's amazing. But, 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 you know, we tell yeah. ourselves stories about ourselves. Right. And about what we're going through. So here you had a dark moment. Yeah. And you could have told your story. Your story could have been stuck in they did me wrong. Yes. They yes. talked about me. Yes. They gossiped about me. Yeah. They're spreading rumors about me. Mm -hmm. You could have got stuck in that story. That's true. But instead, you told a different story. Yeah. You began to tell your story of regeneration. Yes. Renewal. Yeah. You know, uh, how can I find my own voice? And then now we have this jewel. And, and, and so you're the moniker of the pop of unbotherability mm -hmm. has become real. Period. It's sitting right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's sitting right there. And you know what? I, I just want to also speak to what you just said because it is so very, 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 very true. Like taking <laughs> certain situations and being able to, to make them your own story. Yeah. Your own story. Yeah. You can really decide. You are the author and the, and the sole creator of how you make up your mind. It's truly up to you because it's so easy to get stuck. I mean... I ask myself over and over again, why is this happening to me? Mm -hmm. Why is this happening to me? I do people good. I'm not a shady person. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Like, right. why would this person steal from me? Why would that? And I could have stayed in that place. Right, right. But I needed to become the author of this new tale. Right, right. You know, and that tale is Mr. Unbothered. Be unbothered. Right. Be solid in your word. You know, say what you, you're going to do and do it. Do it. You know what I mean? Period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Those that lie and steal, they're under the influence of a lie of scarcity. Right. They're influenced by some kind of trauma that they never healed. Mm. So they are using that as an excuse to steal from somebody else or sometimes just trying to bring somebody down. Right. Because the person's shining too bright right. in their minds. Right. They don't understand that they have that same light. Period. You know, they have the same <laughs> potential. We all, yeah. you know, everybody gets the same amount of hours and minutes in the day nobody gets some extra hours that's fact. you know what i'm saying yep. you get 28 i only get 24 <laughs> you know <laughs> we all get the same amount of hours right the same same amount of air yeah you know so what we do with those hours is up to us we yep. can complain yeah you know or we can testify yep. to the goodness of life and see what happens so yeah. So you look healthy, first of all. I gotta say, you look, Thank you. you look really good, man. Your Thank skin you. looks good. Thank you. You know, you look good. Come so on. So what, what are some of your practices, physically, mentally, spiritually? I mean, you know, what are you eating? I mean, what, what's going on? <laughs> well, I well, I, I I make sure that I do take time out to meditate. Yeah. Um, I always work out. You know, yeah. either moving or dancing. Yeah. Um, I'm technically a vegetarian. Yeah. You know, I have been for the last uh, four years now. Yeah. Yep, so my eating habits are, you know, fruits and vegetables, mostly. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, just getting uh, enough uh, efficient vitamin, you know, vitamins and right. sleep. Right. You know, that's really important. Yeah. Um, I just tried out this uh, this magnesium uh, glycate, uh -huh. and it's been making me sleep so much better. Well, magnesium better. definitely helps you sleep. Yeah. yeah so, I, I take magnesium. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I've been it makes, taking— it makes you cools you out yes and, but most people again and we were talking about this before we started interviewing most people are vitamin d deficient mm -hmm. and most people are also magnesium deficient mm. it's not in the food because right right the ground is doesn't have the nutrients that it used to have so yeah. you need to supplement it yep yeah. so you know i'll be on my vitamins you know what i mean i set intentions if i'm not in the studio i'm still you know writing my thoughts down so yeah. uh i do uh an intentional job mm -hmm. about you know um you know, being positive and making sure I get sleep and, mm -hmm. you know, um, setting intentions for my day. You know, um, it gets tough, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's purpose it's purpose work. So I, I try to, you know, rise up in a positive spirit. Yeah, well, you said the key word, intention. 
Yeah. And uh, a lot of people that are navigating through the world, they don't establish intention. Right. They're kind of just reacting to circumstances. Right. You know, rather than establishing an intention, which becomes like a rudder in right. a direction. I've said over the years that people are suffering from an intention deficit disorder mm -hmm. instead of attention deficit disorder. <laughs> intention. <laughs> <They have a> <laughs> intention. <laughs> you know, you, tell, you ask a person, you know, what's happening with your day to day? Right. I don't know. I have to wait to see what's happening. Right. No, no, no. See right. what's happening first. <laughs> And then let it manifest, you right. know, establish the intention. You know, I see this day unfolding perfectly. Right. I see I see the, the mysticism of the living one showing up as great opportunities, mm. meeting great people, mm. uh, things that I don't even know about yet showing up in my life. Y you know, this is what you're Fire. doing. Fire. Fire. This is what you're doing, <laughs> you know. And, and, you know, a lot of times people, they also suffer from thinking they're not good enough or they're not worthy enough. Right. But the presence of God, the presence of the living one, is intelligence itself. Period. So someone may have a more finely tuned intellect, right. but they don't have more intelligence. Right. We're, all, we're surrounded by intelligence. All day. We're surrounded by love. Yeah. So if you establish an intention, then that intelligence flows through you, and you have hunches, yep. intuitive hits. Yep. You know, Go left, don't go right. Why yep. should I go left? That doesn't seem logical. Right, right. Oh, I see. Why ah, I left. exactly. You know. So, so obviously you talked about this moment. Are there any other moments where you looked at it at the time and it seemed really negative? Yeah. Or like you made a mistake or something, but then as things unfolded, you realized it was really good for you. Yeah, so uh, I talk about my experience uh, going to Australia mm -hmm. and this little town where a lot of the aboriginals are. Oh, yeah. And um, when I went... To perform there, you know, first of all, this is like, you know, uh, some artists will call it the Chitlin Circus because you're going into new territory, uh -huh. you know, maybe where they might know one of your songs, but they have never really been formally introduced to you. Right, this right. was like really super early on in my career, you know, uh -huh. as a solo artist, you know, I would pretty much say, all right, I'm ready to go on tour, book the dates up. And mm -hmm. I would literally at this point in time would be maybe even doing t two to three shows a night. Right. And I ended up in this town, and I looked at the stage, and I was like, what is this? Uh -huh. I said, this is not set up. This is not to my liking, you right. know what I mean? But I still had to perform. And what I realized in performing and meeting that small town was you know, the gift of performing and giving, mm -hmm. whether it's one person or a thousand people or 144,000 people, it doesn't matter. Yes. That, trans that transfer of energy, them watching me perform, you know, knowing a lot of artists don't even visit this place, they were so appreciative. Wow. And it really gave me the confidence of knowing, you know, that, I mean, because every artist feels this way, like, well, are they coming still? Or, right, right, right. You, you know, you, you, Anybody showing up? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> you know, you have this worry, but it's like the people that are supposed to be before you, if you're doing the right job as a performer, as an entertainer, mm -hmm. you know, um, because... Entertainers, they have different moments, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the 80s Michael is different from the 2000s Michael, you right, know? Right, 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 and, and, growth. It, and, and that's what a lot of people don't understand, you know, because mm -hmm. a, a lot of, you know, the youth, they, they feel like, well, is he still on or is he falling off? And, mm -hmm. and, you know, as an artist, you're supposed to have different experience. You're not supposed to always perform in front of- You're supposed to be saying ABC the whole I life. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I was I was getting stuck in that mindset, yeah, yeah. you know, un until I explored this place. Mm -hmm. And when I saw these people, when I saw the Aboriginals, and I'm like, people don't even know that these people exist. I mean, I'm, you've seen one in person, right? Oh, yeah, I was there. It, I've, I've been there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, wow, the you know, this is, they have the same skin color as us. Yeah. You know, they have the same culture, you know, right. and... um. I, I left away from that performance really um, feeling grateful and, and and just really happy. Did that they appreciate you? They did. Yeah. I took pictures <laughs> with a whole big family. Right, right. And I mean, it was it was a great experience. And I speak about that in the book. That was another moment that yeah. you know in my mind as an artist, right. you know, thinking that oh well, you know, this performance needs to be like this and this. And it's like no, all you need is a mic and these legs. Absolutely. And, and, and guess what? You can you can bring joy to the table. Yeah, and <laughs> and I, I love that. I love that. I have that perspective. You right. know, uh, some artists, you know. Well, do you know what you are? 
you're not a, a, a performance artist, you're a transformance artist. Mm. You know, your, your, your energy is, is electric, so you're helping people transform their life. So it's not a, it's not just a performance. It's actually right. a transformance. Right. You know, <laughs> I like that, Mike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you remind me of something I used to say years ago, and that is, three thirty or three hundred. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show up. Right. The way I show up. Mm -hmm. Three thirty. Now it's way more than three hundred. Right. But at the time, it was like I, I didn't know mm -hmm. whether it's gonna be three people showing up or thirty or three hundred. Right. So I, I would, that was my motto. Mm -hmm. Three thirty or three hundred. I'm still giving my all. Right. You know, if three people show up. Cool. They're gonna get it. it <laughs> period. If 30, and, 30 and people show up, they're gonna get it. And that's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. I feel like, hey, <clears throat> two people, one person, you're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. You're gonna get it. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so what so in terms of your spiritual practice, your books and things yeah. like that, what's your go to? You know? Um, my go to is probably reading a book and meditation. Uh -huh. That uh really Any particular books high on your situation now or over well, the years. Well, I'm currently, um, yeah, I mean, of course, um, uh, the Four Agreements. Four Agreements, yep, yeah. the yeah. Four Agreements, of yeah. course. Don Miguel. Uh, yep. Um, what's another book? Because I got a lot of esoteric books that I like to read, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the one that I'm reading now is called The Superior Man. Uh-huh, by... Um, I know what you're talking about, yeah. I think his name is Dana. I, I don't want to mess up his name, but yeah, yeah um, that's the book I'm reading currently. Yeah, he has but, a couple of books out. Yeah, but I got a small one. little, uh, you know, library, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And the thing about, you know, reading for me is it just allows me to, you know, um, read other perspectives, right, you know what right. I mean? I'm able to, you know, just sit with myself and, and meditation and breath works does that for me too. Absolutely. So that, those are my go-to. If I'm feeling like, hyper stressed or you know i got something on my my mind and i need to like consult myself you know in in a in a quiet way meditation that's why i'm going right right yeah. right i want you to hear something he said reading reading sharpens the mind you see there, there's food for thought but there's also thought for food mm. you know and when you mm. start to bring in different perspectives right it, it opens up your, your 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 mind and people don't understand that matter comes from thought so like when you have a thought that creates protein right that ultimately becomes your perception then becomes your experience and many people you were talking earlier about people just being stuck in fear and stuck in a loop right and they just keep repeating it over and over and over again like groundhog day yeah that movie groundhog day? yeah yeah you know over and over and over again and then they start to curate the activity of their predispositions that they may have inherited right you know they can't break out of it so then disease shows up yep oh but if you just expand your awareness a little bit yeah then you start to produce different kind of proteins mm -hmm. different kind of chemicals flow through the body immune system becomes stronger you start to catch inspiration oh you know sometimes i like to say <clears throat> let me reunite with a part of me that is in the unknown Mm. Let me reunite with that part. Let that let me become conscious of that part, and then inspiration starts to flow. Mm. So I just want people to hear that he reads. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but say that one more time. What you just said, I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have to add that to my to my repertoire. Yeah, yeah. I want I say to myself, let me reunite with the part of me that's in the unknown. Why is it important? Because we already know what we know. Yeah. But we don't know what we don't know. Right. You know, if, I remember many, many years ago, there was a, a, this Native American elder that went to a blackboard and he put a dot in the middle of the blackboard and he said, this is what we know. All of this is what we don't know. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> but many people just live and they try, right. to, they try to just navigate through what they know. I know this. And it's good to, you gotta know. Of course, of course. But you also have to be aware that there's so much you don't know. That's true. That's what true. you don't know is bigger than what you know. That's facts. So then, it's, that's what. So spiritual growth is actually going yep. into what is unknown to the ego. Period. It's known by your spirit. Yep. And so by just by reading, sometimes, you know, when I when I wake up and I start to meditate in the morning, I mean, I'll read a paragraph of something. Then my mind and my soul will go down a corridor. They may not have anything to do with what I just read. Right. They may not have anything to do with that, but it just sparks something. Mm. Next thing I know, the spirit is taking me. Mm -hmm. Like this morning, it took me into a topic, 
you know, the greatest story ever told is a story you tell yourself about yourself. Mm. You know, it just took me down this, this touch. I didn't wake up thinking about that. Mm. I woke up just thinking, you know, when, when, when I woke up, it's like, okay, it's early. I'm gonna get up and meditate. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any agenda. Right. I, I didn't have an agenda to get a topic. Mm -hmm. That wasn't my agenda. The agenda was just to commune mm. spirit. Right. And then he gave me a topic. I mm -hmm. said, thank you very much. I don't have to think about that today. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> the best ideas, the best things come to you when you are quiet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 like, I wanted you on here because I wanted your generation and those coming up behind you yeah. to hear you yeah. speak about meditation, yeah. to speak about spiritual practice, to speak about your exercise, speak about your choosing consciously what you put yeah. in the body. Oh. Um, because a lot of times people are out here, they just want sensations yeah. and they want excitement, yeah. but they don't understand that the opposite of excitement is depression. Yeah. If you just go for excitement, yeah. then you get its opposite, mm. you get burn out. That's facts. But if you go for enthusiasm, yeah. which means entheos comes from being a god, mm. there's no opposite to that. Hmm. You, just, you just keep unfolding. Right. You know. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, so what is there anything that you want to tell the folks <laughs> that we may have not covered? You, you we covered you growing up. Yeah, I mean, you know, the it, boy it's... band. <laughs> we covered your book. We covered. Yeah. The aloneness in terms of uh, the seeming loss yep. of the family structure at that time, yep. you know, and, and how that became a blessing. Yep. We, we, I love the way you talked about going to Australia and nothing was to your liking. It was totally foreign, but yep. it made you come back to why you do what you do anyway. Oh, my goodness. You know, that's, yep. that's big. Yeah. And this, no. That's in the book, too. Yep, that's yeah. in the book. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I just would... You know, uh, just thank you all, you know what I mean, uh, for supporting me. You know, even if you are not a fan, you know, check <laughs> me out, you know, um, and thank you also, uh, Mike. I have. You're the only one allowed to call Mike now. Oh, okay. Mr. Beckwith. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. That's, Beckwith. That's too formal. Okay. <laughs> Michael. So, Michael, that's better? When, yeah. Okay. But when you say Mike, I remember when you, we did that, you know, people don't know, may not remember, that we did a project <laughs> together to raise money for Music Cares, uh -huh. for, the, for the recording industry, for the artists who may be temporarily without finances. So we did something together, mm -hmm. and we did a, a Wednesday night service, and then we took all the proceeds. Yep. And, and gave it to Music Cares. And he was calling me Mike at one point. And everybody, all my <laughs> staff like, was looking at me, looking at him like. You, you wildin', no, you wildin', no, oh, oh Marion. Like, 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 he's looking at me like, he said, I'm unbothered by it. Cause it was, it's so sweet. Okay, you right. know what I'm He was like, this is sweet. You know, <laughs> no one calls me Mike, but you call me Mike, it just felt so good. You know? <laughs> Mr. Beckwith from no, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I, I'm so grateful for your time and for your wisdom. You know, what I mean, I always keep up with you, and I have a lot of projects um, on the rise. Yep, I got a uh, Sonic Book uh, One, which is is titled uh, Full Circle, my album, and then I'm dropping Sonic Book Two in December. Right. Uh, got some new music. Uh, I'm working on a, a TV show I just sold. It's right. called it's Title Involved. And the name um, of the station is um, what is it? All Black. All Black Station. Yeah, All yeah, Black. Yeah. So you know, just uh, you know, it. it Expect, you know, good things, great things, great music, great storytelling. Um, I, I found that, you know, this medium that I've been gifted to not only share my experiences, but to share other experiences is uh, you have to take responsibility for it. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, mm -hmm. I'm someone that has, you know, started off very, very young, but now realize the power in taking the responsibility to share each other's story. Mm -hmm. This is a shared experience. Mm -hmm. So um, be just ex expecting great things from me. And uh, we going on tour in February. Uh, so just uh, stay updated and thank and you And how so do they much. get in, stay in contact with you? Uh, Y'all can follow me on Instagram, Omarion, um, omarionworldwide.com, is that right? I got to make sure I'm right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, just just keep up. You know, I'm on all um, uh, all all platforms. So yeah. one last question. Yeah, and that is, look back and see yourself at 17. What would you tell that guy now if you had to give him some advice? <laughs> what, what would you say to him? I would tell him, you know, check on your business. <laughs> yeah. I would say, check on your business. Oh, look look at the fine print. Mm -hmm. And then I would tell him just just keep going, mm -hmm. just keep going, man. Yeah, just keep going because 
you know, for me, this this is the journey. And, you know, a lot of people, you know, invest in the peak moments, but the peak moments happen so fast, mm -hmm. you know. So I find enjoyment in the journey. You know, the people that I come across, the people that uh, have inspired, inspired me, motivated me to continue on, you know. Um, uh, people like Stevie Wonder, <laughs> you know, um, you're bringing up a lot of good people. I mean, I just talked with Stevie yesterday. Oh, you did? <laughs> We're hanging out tomorrow. Oh, well, I'll you tell know, myself what's up. I'm going to tell him. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, people like Stevie, you know, um, I, I that, just, That's a genius right there. That's a genius. Oh, come on, man. One of the greatest yeah. artists ever. Yeah, yeah. You know, poetry, and, pure poetry. And, and also living, you know, yeah. that I want to point out. Yeah. Because, you know, um, I'm in this for the long haul. And a lot of people, you know, a lot of... of you know, of the legends that, you know, m I look up to and my peers look up to, they they, they have transitioned early. Yeah, you know what I mean? Did. Prince, yep, Michael Jackson. Mike, yeah. a, a lot of them. But, you know, the point is, is, is you know, it ain't over till it's over, baby. Right. Take care of your temple. Well, you're taking care of your temple. Yes. I can see that. But I love what you just said. I just want to just bring this point because it's really, you said people sometimes invest just in the peak moments. Yeah. But well, you're talking about a long-term journey. Oh. You know, I, I say when people come to the community, I say, you're not coming here to get high. Mm. You're coming here to get free. Mm. You know, because some people want to get the peak more. Oh, I want to yeah, be yeah. high. I want to, yep. you know, yep. but you actually want to develop habits so that you have a way of living yeah. your entire life, not just being high, yep. but being free. And that's what you're saying. Don't just invest in the peak moments, yep. but invest in the journey with the habits that you've developed. Period. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, so thanks. Thank you, Mr. Beckwith. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. What's your last name? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. <laughs> no, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure. No, it's always... And much respect. Yeah, much we got to do some more stuff together. Yes, sir. This is Amarion. This is the book. That's a beautiful. You look better in person, man. <laughs> <laughs> the picture's good, though. Thank um, you. <laughs> unbothered. Check this out. The power of choosing joy. For those of you who have followed me for years, you know I like to say that Choice is a function of awareness. Mm -hmm. You expand your awareness, you can choose. Mm -hmm. With limited awareness, you live in reaction. Mm. So he's saying there's a power in choosing joy. The pop, the king hey. of being unbothered. Peace and blessings, everybody. Have a bright day. Welcome back. You heard it again. The individual that I had with me today, Omarion, he used the word meditation as a part of his daily spiritual practice. It allows him to become unbothered because he's starting to live in a field that is not in the world of effects or circumstances or situations. It's not in the field of what other people are thinking about him. It's not in the field of him thinking about what other people are thinking. As, as he mentioned, even during his alone time, he found his own voice. Not the voice of the world, not the voice of well-wishers or those who would critique him. He found his own voice through the power and the art and the science of meditation, which incidentally is why we have a way of meditation service every Sunday at Agape. 6.45 a.m. Pacific time, and is why every service and every class that we teach here begins with meditation. So let's, let's go into that right now, and we're going to, in, in, in honor of Brother Omarion, we're going to place our attention on being unbotherable. So the only way that you can be unbotherable is if you become aware that that power that is within you is greater than the power that's in the world power that's within you is greater than all that seems to be coming at you. Close your outer eyes, tap the space between your eyebrows, is activate our ability to see, not with eyes, but to see with our awareness, to catch inspiration with our awareness. So as we turn within, notice the sensation right there and you're what some people would call the third eye because you're a spiritual being, it's actually your first eye, but it's oftentimes not activated because we're 
primary living, primarily living in time and space in the manifest realm. But now we want to live in the space beyond beyond, beyond time and space. So we turn within, take a, a, a receive a breath, release. And since we do not want to be in intention deficit, we don't want to live in an intention deficit disorder. Embrace the intention to wake up to the part of you that's unbothered by what's going on in the world, what people might be saying about you, the critique, even a voice in your own head that may say you're unworthy, you're not good enough, you're too young, you're too old, you don't have enough talent. We're rising above all of that and become unbothered. The consciousness of unbotherability. That's the intention. Let your attention embrace your intention. So you begin to feel what you mean when you say, I'm not bothered. This too shall pass. I shall not be moved from this state of peace. Feel into that intention. And with every breath the body takes, the feeling of being unbothered is increasing. We feel the vibration of the 91st Psalm that has been recited by millions of people for years upon years upon years, that it is loaded and coded within the mental atmosphere of the planet. The th people shall fall at thy right and thy left, a thousand may fall at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee, because we're making our habitation the secret place of the Most High. We're living in a higher frequency. Unbothered, untouched. Give yourself permission with intention to wake up to unbotherability. Notice that the body's breathing. And feel the frequency, the vibration of your intention. I shall not be moved by circumstance, condition, people, places, or things. I'm rooted in the secret place of the Most High under the shadow of the Almighty. Unbotherability.
notice that the body is breathing. So you're very present to the breath and you're very present to the intention. This moment of silence, stillness, we're beginning to hear a voice of another kind. Not the voice of the world, not the other voices of people who have said things to us, about us. No, underneath all of that chatter, there is a rhythm and a voice of another kind. A voice of pure spirit, your real nature telling you Behold, is it not written, your life is the life of the divine. You're magnificent, you're beautiful, wonderful. Feel into that frequency. Give yourself permission to live in this secret place of the Most High, secret to the world and its cacophony of worry. Unbotherability. Non-reactionary, but responsive to love, peace, and harmony. We feel it, we give thanks for it, and we allow it to be so. So it is. As you slowly open your eyes, go forth through this day with an intention to not be bothered. There is a, a moment of spiritual maturity in relationships. It's called overlooking something. Where instead of being bent out of shape if your mate or partner, friend, does something that you don't like, after a while you grow, you just kind of overlook it. It's not important. Some people have peculiar ways of being in the world and you may not like them, but instead of making a mountain out of a molehill, you'd overlook it and keep on stepping, unless it's something egregious. Today, don't be bothered. Be enthused about your connection to life. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for your support of Take Back Your Mind podcast. And many of you have gone to the website at agapelive.com, which is the primary sponsor of the podcast, and you've begun to donate to Agape. And some of you have even put their podcast. And so thank you for much, so, so much. You support the sponsor. You're supporting the ongoingness of this podcast. Some of you have started to use the uh, superfood greens and the vitamin D3, K2 for your own health. Many of you have gone to Neutralize.com. You found Adapta Zen and got the bundle and subscribed to it. You're supporting a sponsor. You're supporting us. And you're supporting your own health. Have a beautiful day. Your time is very valuable. So I want to thank you for lending us your ear and participating in taking back your mind. If you want to submit a question for the question of the week, please submit it to podcast at michaelbeckwith.com. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, please submit a review and let us know your thoughts. Stay on top of current episodes by subscribing to the podcast so that you'll receive alerts and not miss one single episode. And feel free to share this podcast with all of your friends and family. And until we meet again, take back your mind, and you will take back your life. Peace and blessings.